Well, so it, it dawned on me because the kids I grew up with, the the African American kids that I grew up with, friends of mine, high school, you know, buddies, like my community, the ones that stayed in Oakland just seemed to suffer more mm-hmm. than the ones that came out to Georgia or Texas, yeah. started their families out here. Like I did go on social media just to check in on my friends. And and then I I it's just it's a noticeable difference. There's a different look in the eye of you know being a black person who grew up in Oakland who left California to go out to Texas, you know, got a degree, went to law school in many cases, got a great job, got a nice house, can afford a house out here in Texas. It's like three four bedroom house can't afford that house in Oakland, you know, and, and and many of the people who stayed in Oakland got caught up in 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 these social activists, social justice, you know, yeah. signaling cycles. And when you get caught up in that, you can't live your life. No. You can't live or your you life have no for the re- life and you have no self either. You're yeah. just living propaganda. You're a parrot. You're living propaganda. And I hate seeing my community treated like that. I hate it. I have a visceral reaction to seeing these Yale-educated oh, God, people too. coming into my hometown and treating my community as props. Me too. Mm-hmm. It breaks my heart. <laughs> it breaks my heart too. Yeah. It's behind everything I do. Their, yeah. their arrogance towards people I grew up with, it just breaks my heart, and that's why I fight. But uh, it's so heartbreaking to see it happen and them not get it. I get so mad. I'm like, can't you see? You're just being farmed. You're being farmed so you can't leave. You can't grow. You can't be free. They yeah. want you there to uh, just foment hate, and then they... There's, um, I, and it makes me so mad when I see that those kids are being paid to do that street, you know, to be the uh, street gangs like Hitler had. You know, they're being paid, Antifa and them. Yeah. And I, I got so mad because I go, why can't they give them a good job with the benefits in the future with that money that George Soros gives them? Why can't they have a job with the future and some benefits so they can live? Why are you doing that to them? It gets their own better interests. I know. It's infuriating. And it, it it's made the work. So why I had to leave all that behind is because I was in it trying to fight it. Mm-hmm. And you can't do that anymore. Mm-hmm. And this has been my call and this has been Bobby's call. But Bobby's come in from the health side of things. They're doing it from the health side of things mm-hmm. too. Well, that's the one that matters because – you know, all the kids with autism and all that stuff, which they tried to shut up, you know, try to yep. not let us talk about. I know. It, it, these are the forbidden topics, but they're the ones we have to talk about if we're going to see real change. Mm-hmm. The kind of change that I know my progressive, good hearted friends care about. They want to see it, but they don't understand why everyone's so stuck. They want to blame the right for that. But it's not the right's fault. You know, it's not at all. And it, it really takes leaving that psych. It's kind of this weird uh, vacuum chamber of psychosis. I know because I was there and, you, saw, you know, we both were there. Yeah. It takes a big old cock on the head. My sister and me used to say it's the it's the hammer to the head one because my grandma said, my grandma used to say, they look, she had a thick Lithuanian accent, but she'd go, he looked like he got knocked in the head with a hammer like the cows we used to kill. <laughs> and she said that when you knock the cow in the head with the hammer, they go like this. Yeah. And she's like, that's the that's, look. She goes, that's what they need. You know, they need yeah. the knock in the head. Yeah. To go, wake up. And I've tried so hard. I try every single day of my life. It's... It's really hard to bring people over through logical conversation and sharing your own experience, Roseanne. And I I had to live it myself to really understand it. And then I had to live it even more to be able to articulate it. Yeah, I get it. And But now the big step is 
-hmm. You know, when you learn it and you got it, Jake, could you get me a drink? I'm getting yeah. a smacky mouth. You want water or what? I'll take my other beverage. Uh, Chardonnay, that is? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I That's my you. water. I want to be you when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to be you when I grow up. Um, I, I, I haven't even gone into the fascinating life you've lived. I love all your ideas. I feel like we mind meld on a bunch of things, and I'm really excited past the fact of you being the vice president, you know, being chosen by, you know, RFK Jr. to be his vice president, which is. I mean, he's got the biggest genius mind in the world, and I see how you fit right in there with it. It gives me hope for people who run for office in this country rather than just a bunch of, you know, money-hungry prostitutes that'll do anything that a lobbyist tells them to do against the people, but you're for the people, which is what I used to like about the Democrat Party, but forget all that. It's not our daddy's Democrat Party anymore. No, it's not. Oh, you see.